Welcome to CT Expert Insights. When your business needs expert advice on compliance issues, you can count on us. We provide tips, tools, and strategies to help you at every stage of your business's life cycle. Hi, I'm Greg Corumbas. Our guest this week is Tamara Kling. She is a government relations and regional attorney for the CT Corporation. She joins us today to discuss the life cycle of a business entity. And Tamara, thanks so much for being with us. You're welcome. Let's start with entity types. So what options are out there and how do you determine what's right for you? There are a variety of entity types, but today I think we should focus on the corporation and the limited liability company. Those are the most popular and the most commonly used. And so let's talk about the pros and cons for each one. How do you determine which one's right for you? Well, a lot of people think a corporation is a little bit more technical. It requires a little bit more work where the LLC can be smaller. But I tell people with the LLC, it can look as much like a corporation or as a partnership as you want it to be. A corporation has a board of directors and shareholders, while an LLC just has people who own it, who are generally called members, and then it has to be managed, and it can be managed by the members, or they can hire a professional manager. So once you make the decision of which entity type you want, how do you go about formally establishing that? Well, first of all, you have to go to the state. You have to choose a state where you wish to do business, your home state. For many large businesses, they choose Delaware. For other businesses, they tend to just pick the state where they are located. So if you're a corporation, if you want to have a corporation, you file what we call Articles of Incorporation. If you want to be an LLC, you form an LLC, and that the title for that varies from state to state, but it's called a formation document. And what other requirements are, are required, whether it's local, state, federal? Uh, how much paperwork, how many hoop jumping uh, episodes are required here? There's not a lot for a corporation or LLC in the beginning. All, all uh, let's see, corporations and LLCs are part of state law. There's no such thing as a federal limited liability company. So you file with the state, depending on what business you're in, you may have to get certain licenses. Do you, are you in a, a kind of business that is, for instance, pharmaceuticals? Are you selling alcohol to the public? These are all things that have to be taken into consideration. How do you make changes to an existing entity? Once you've made that decision, is it difficult or pretty easy to make changes? It's fairly straightforward. Some of the typical changes would be a change of name or a change of the registered agent. Any kind of information that was usually originally on the formation document, if that changes, you file what's called an amendment and you do that in your home state. What is a foreign qualification and how do you pursue that? Well, that happens when the business becomes more successful. Perhaps that you've been doing business in your home state and you decide you wanted to branch out. Well, if you start doing business in another state, you're going to have to do what we call qualify. All states require anyone who's doing business there to qualify, and you qualify as a foreign corporation. Doesn't mean you're from another country, it just means you're from another state. And you would file what are generally called articles of qualification, again, at the Secretary of State or the State Filing Office. Are some states easier to deal with than others, or is it pretty straightforward no matter where you go? Amendments tend to be pretty straightforward. Some states will require evidence from your home state, while some states will just take you at your word. Let's talk about the ongoing compliance issues now. What type of ongoing compliance and maintenance is required once you've gotten your entity established and, and you're rolling along? Well, once a business is, is engaged in its business, it still has to keep up with the filing office of their state. So they are generally required to file annual reports. They have to make any of those amendments we talked about if there's a change. And they're required to have a registered agent for service of process. Every state requires these businesses to tell them on the public record who they have to go, who a person would go to if they wish to engage, if wish, they wish to sue that corporation or LLC. Be, most states, if you're doing business there, they want to know that their citizens can find you if necessary. How well are businesses keeping up with this? Uh, obviously the benefits of establishing a formal entity, so you're not personally liable for anything that might go wrong. 
uh, the value of that, it, it should be obvious. Uh, are most business owners on top of that, or is this something that sometimes they need to be prodded along to do? You have to do it. It's not a good idea to act as a sole proprietor and put everything you own on the line. Compliance sometimes depends on the size of the business, the knowledge of the person who's engaging in the compliance requirements, and again, the type of business that you're in. That's why it always helps to have some kind of professional let you know. Annual reports are a good example. Some states are due annually, like the name, others biennially, and others for di at different times. So it's important that you keep abreast of this information, and sometimes the best way to do that is with a professional. When you're a business person, you're busy running your business, you want to, but you want to make sure this is taken care of. So that is why you might want to look for some outside help, including the good folks over at CT. Uh, what is the value of a professional registered agent or someone who can help walk you through all this? Well, everyone needs to have the registered agent. It can be someone else, but the best thing about having a professional registered agent like CT Corporation is that we're always here. We are always ready to accept service of process and send it along to you. So you never have the problem where you would have something called a default judgment leveled against you. And a default judgment occurs if someone sues you, you don't know about it and you don't show up in court. Well, then the plaintiff wins. So that's not, no one wants to have that happen. Uh, Tamara, if folks are interested in getting help from CT, what's the best way for them to contact you? They should go to our website. They can find information there. And we have people in every city that are willing to help you. We have, we're very loyal to our customers and we give you as much help as we can. Tamara, it's been great to have you with us today. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Tamara Kling, Government Relations and Regional Attorney for the CT Corporation. I'm Greg Corumbus, and for more information on this topic, please call the phone number or visit the website on your screen. With 125 years of experience, CT is here to help you at every stage of the business life cycle. 